Will harpoons save millions of people from hunger? For Ukraine, reliable protection from the Russian fleet is one of the top challenges. Its successful solution makes it possible to neutralize the threat of amphibious assault, with the aim of capturing Odessa and subsequent access to the border with Transnistria, another pro-Russian separatist region, a part of Moldova. But even this is not the main issue. Maritime deblockade of the Ukrainian Black Sea coast allows to solve not even Ukrainian, but a very serious global problem and save millions of human lives. Watch this video to learn what kind of global problem this is and how Ukraine intends to solve it with the help of Western allies. Russia blocks Ukraine from the Black Sea with the help of its Black Sea military. Therefore, it must either be driven away somehow or destroyed. And the best weapons for this are the anti-ship missiles. Ukraine has a similar missile in service, the Neptune, which is an upgrade of the Soviet KH-35 missile. The missile successfully passed the test and was put into service. Moreover, the Ukrainian side and the Pentagon claimed that it was two Neptune missiles that destroyed the flagship of the Black Sea Fleet. The missile cruiser Moskva, located 80 miles from Odessa, on the night of April 13th and 14th. True, some experts, mostly Russian, argue that it was not a Neptune, but some kind of Western-made rocket, Harpoon or NSM. Be that as it may, Ukraine has a very limited number of anti-ship missiles to use for unblocking the Black Sea coast. This is well understood in NATO, and they offer a solution to this problem. On May 23rd, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin said that Denmark was ready to provide Ukraine with their Harpoon anti-ship missiles, developed by the American company McDonnell Douglas. But obviously, the decision on the supply of Harpoon was made much earlier than Lloyd Austin said, since five days later, Ukrainian Defense Minister Alexei Reznikov said that Ukraine received Harpoon missiles from Danish partners, with the participation of the UK. And the speaker of the Odessa Regional Military Administration, Sergei Bratchuk, said literally this, Now we have received so many harpoons that we can sink the entire Russian Black Sea fleet. It looks like it will be hot in the Black Sea soon. Let's take a closer look at these harpoon missiles to evaluate their effectiveness against the Russian fleet. The United States of America began developing these submarine-launched missiles as early as 1965. This is when they got their name Harpoon from association with whaling. At first, the work was slow, but after the Israeli destroyer Eilat was destroyed by P-1 term missiles, fired from Egyptian boats in 1967, the United States assessed the potential of such weapons and decided to reorient the Harpoon program to combat ships. Official work on the project began in 1968, and already in October 1972, the first flight tests of prototypes of rockets with a solid rocket engine took place. Officially, the Harpoon anti-ship missile was adopted by the United States in 1977. As the requirements of the military for the effective range of the missile have increased, the solid fuel engine was replaced with a more efficient turbojet. Initially, Harpoon had only a ship-based version, RGM-84A. In 1979, they created a version for P-3 aircraft, AGM-84A, and in 1981, a version for submarines. Compatibility with different platforms contributed to the wide distribution of Harpoon. These anti-ship missiles are in service with more than 30 countries. Depending on the launch method, the Harpoon is 12.5 or 15 feet long and weighs up to 1520 pounds. The missile reaches speeds of up to 535 miles per hour, which means it's a subsonic missile. The main part of the flight takes place at a height of several meters above the water. The maximum firing range depends on the carrier, missile modification, and target designation and ranges from 55 to 140 miles. There's also a slam modification, for hitting ground targets with a range of 175 miles. Structurally, the Harpoon rocket consists of four compartments. The guidance system equipment is located in the head compartment, followed by the warhead compartment, then the propulsion engine compartment, and the tail compartment. The missile has a cylindrical fuselage with a radio-transparent fairing. Four wings are installed in an X-shaped layout in the middle part of the rocket body, immediately behind the compartment with the warhead. The Harpoon uses a Teledyne CAE J402 turbojet engine designed specifically for this rocket. The engine air intake is located in the lower part of the rocket body, between the lower pair of wings. For a launch from submarines or surface ships, the corresponding versions of the rocket are equipped with a solid propellant launch booster fixed in the tail section. The missile is equipped with a 487-pound WDU-18B high-explosive fragmentation warhead. The guidance of the missile is carried out in two stages. At the first stage of the flight, 
It flies at an ultra-low altitude, 3 to 4 meters above the water to a given point in space, the coordinates of which must be entered into its memory in advance. Orientation in space on the first modifications of the rocket was carried out using an inertial navigation system. In later versions with the help of GPS, the latest modification, RGM-84N, or the aviation version, AGM-84N, also known as Harpoon Block 2 Plus, uses GPS navigation in conjunction with an integrated two-way communication channel with the carrier aircraft, which allows you to correct the missile's course, improve the selection of false targets by comparing the data of the homing head of the missile with the data of the carrier aircraft, and to realize the possibility of simultaneous advance of several missiles on the same target from different directions. That is to implement a multi-vector attack in order to disorient the air defense system of the target. At the second stage, an active radar homing head is turned on to search for targets in a sector with a radius of 45 degrees from the direction of flight, and then the rocket continues to its flight controlled by its locator. The maximum detection range of a destroyer is 40 kilometers and up to 18 kilometers for boats. When a missile detects a target, it immediately aims at it and performs an attack. The attack is possible in two ways. The first way is a horizontal attack. The rocket moves parallel to the water at a low altitude, 2 to 4 meters. The second way is the pull-up maneuver. The missile first climbs up to 6,000 feet and then dives into the target, best against low-lying targets, such as boats or surface submarines. For the first time, Harpoon missiles in a combat situation were used by the Iranian fleet in 1980, during the Iran-Iraq War. During Operation Morvarid, which translates from Persian as Pearl, on November 28th to 29th, 1980, Iranian missile boats successfully sank two Iraqi missile boats of the Soviet Project 205 with RGM-84A missiles. According to some data, the missiles were also used by the Iranians during the so-called Tanker War to attack neutral tankers passing through the Persian Gulf. In 1986, the American missile cruiser Yorktown and carrier-based attack aircraft from the aircraft carriers fired several Harpoon missiles at Libyan corvettes and missile boats in the Gulf of Sidra. As a result, one Libyan corvette and one missile boat were sunk. The largest battle involving Harpoon was Operation Praying Mantis on April 18, 1988. During this battle between the American and Iranian fleets, Harpoon missiles were used by both sides. The Iranian corvette Joshan fired a missile at American ships, but it was deflected by electronic interference. American ships and aircraft launched in total two RGM-84 missiles and two AGM-84 missiles, three of which hit the target. All three Harpoon hits achieved during the battle were on the Iranian frigate Sahand, which was sunk. As you can see, the Harpoon rocket proved to be very effective, but will it show its worth in Ukraine? Moreover, there's one difficulty with its application in this country. The fact is that Harpoon was developed exclusively for use from ships, aircraft, and submarines. But the Ukrainian military has a big problem with this. There are practically no warships left in the country. Everything was destroyed by Russia. And what is left are small patrol boats that are not capable of carrying a Harpoon with a launcher. Ukraine does not have submarines at all, as well as any aircraft capable of using this missile. And here it becomes clear why it was Denmark that decided to provide its missiles. This is the only country that at one time developed the installation of Harpoon missiles on a ground launcher, certainly not out of sport. The fact is that it controls the so-called Baltic Straits between the Scandinavian and Jutland peninsulas, the Small Belt, the Big Belt, Orisund, Kattegat, and Skagerrak. Through them lies the only exit from the Baltic to the Atlantic Ocean, so the idea arose to put Harpoon on the cliffs there. It was needed to reliably close the straits in case of war in Europe, first for the Soviet and then for the Russian Navy. For the land launcher, the Danes adapted the Scania 113M 320 chassis with an 8x6 wheel arrangement. Harpoon missiles of the first modification with a range of 75 miles were placed on it. But by that time, this modification was hopelessly outdated. In the United States itself, it was decided to abandon the anti-ship missiles altogether. For example, since 2000, all Arleigh Burke-class destroyers launched into the Navy have entered the Navy without anti-ship missile systems at all. In this regard, the bet was made on universal anti-aircraft guided missiles, capable of attacking surface targets. Therefore, Denmark in the end abandoned this venture. Apparently, it was these land-based anti-ship systems that were removed from the warehouses and delivered to Ukraine. But which missiles are on them? The first modifications, or at least the Harpoon Block II, even without a plus? We'd like to think it's the second one. Otherwise, the outdated missiles are unlikely to penetrate the Russian missile defenses. And in conclusion, the trend is already clearly visible. The weapons provided by the Western allies of Ukraine are far from the newest. 
These are the Leopard 1 tank and the Gepard anti-aircraft gun, which Germany has taken out of service long ago, and the British anti-tank systems in-law of the earliest years of production, which often have low batteries, and therefore the weapon does not work at the most crucial moment. The American M777 howitzers have inspired some optimism, which are still in service with the United States, but it turned out that they were delivered to Ukraine without an electronic unit, which makes it impossible to use them with guided projectiles, and this sharply reduced their combat potential. Therefore, there are great fears that the Western Allies will shove early modifications of Harpoon anti-ship missiles to Ukraine. But there's a nuance in this situation that inspires optimism. In Ukraine, according to US President Biden, there are 20 million tons of grain, which in the context of the impending famine predicted by the UN, will be a real salvation for millions of people. But in order to withdraw it, it is necessary to unblock the Black Sea ports of Ukraine, driving Russian ships away from them. The old Harpoon will not cope with such a task. Therefore, there's hope that this time Ukraine will be given the modern weapons. And in general, it's time for the Western countries to act according to the old musketeer principle. One for all and all for one. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. There will be many interesting videos about modern weapons.